Yes, good morning, good morning, Sister Crawford. All right, sounds good, Sister Crawford. All right, amen, amen, amen. All right, well, I, I got you now, though. I see you. <laughs> So. All right, amen, amen. Well, we're going to get started here in a minute. I, I got my my live feed on Facebook on right now. And um, kind of letting Sister Sandra play in the background. So I'm going to mute you all on the conference call. Sandra McCoy, recorded back in 1996. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to get started with the word here in a minute. But I got to let this song play out. <laughs> God's going to make a miracle. See you on Brother Perry Jones. Blessings on Austin's graduation. God did make a miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Powers in his hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer here in a minute here. This call is being recorded. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry. International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. We are simulcasting live on Facebook and also on the conference call. After we get through with the, the broadcast here live on Facebook, we go into an overtime period on the conference call where we ask questions, encourage one another, and just do a fellowship and exchange of the word that is being laid out this morning. Amen. So if you want to call back later, and I'll mention this again, um, the call number for the conference call is 910-218-0531. Amen and amen. All right, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you are, all that you do, and just being God and being God all by yourself. We lift you up this morning and we plead the blood of Jesus, your darling son, our Savior and Lord. We plead his blood over this entire conference and this Facebook Live, all of this technology, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over every household represented here every family, every ministry, every community, dear Heavenly Father. We plead the blood of Jesus right now, dear Heavenly Father, over this entire world, knowing that there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb, Jesus. Thank you, God. Jesus, we, you, we just say thank you because you're worthy to be praised. And we give you all the glory and all of the power all of the honor because you are worthy, God. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We ask you now to 
be true to your word where two or three are gathered in your name you said you would be in the midst bless this this recording god because we know that it's going to go around the world when it's shared on facebook and on youtube god so bless those that are going to listen that they might be encouraged bless those that are listening now that they might be encouraged bless all that we might be encouraged strengthened and then lord if there's someone that don't know you in the pardon of their sins they don't know you as Lord and Savior, and they listen to this. Move on them by the power of your Holy Spirit right now, God, that they might receive your salvation. We thank you and we praise you, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I am trying to set myself with the goal um, these, these next few weeks, and I'm trying to see if I can build a pattern on this that I can uh, deliver these messages in about a 30-minute period, and then we can go into the discussion time on, on the conference called in overtime after the lecture portion has been given. Our lesson for today comes from Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 39, going all the way down to verse 56. Luke chapter 1 starting at verse 39, going all the way down to verse 56. The title of today's lesson is Full of Praise for the Promise. Oh, I'm going to get at it, say that again. Full of praise. Yes, full of praise for the promise. So let's begin reading, uh, and I want to read it from the Message Bible. I'm going to go between the Message Bible and the King James as I teach but I want to read it from the Message Bible because the Message Bible lays this out so, so easy and straightforward. It says that in the 39th verse of Luke chapter 1, Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judah in the hill country, straight to Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly, You're so blessed among women. The baby in your womb also blessed. And, and Mary, and Mary says, and, and Elizabeth says, And why am I so blessed that the mother why am I so blessed that the mother of my Lord visits me? The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ear, the baby in my womb skipped or leaped like a lamb for sheer joy. Bless woman who believe what God says. Believe every word would come true. And Mary said, I'm bursting with good news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one good look at me and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The, the God whose very name is holy, set apart from all others. His mercy flows in waves after waves on those who are in awe before him. He bears his arm and shows his strength, scattering the buffeting braggarts. He knocks tyrants off of their horse, their high horse, pulls victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. He embraces his chosen child, Israel. He remembered and piled on the mercy, piled them on high. It's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abraham and right up to now. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months 
and then went back to her own home. And I got to read verse, verse 57. And when Mary was full, I mean, when Elizabeth was full term in her pregnancy, she bore a son. And we're going to stop right there. So I said, the title of this lesson this morning is Full of Praise for the Promise. Full of Praise for the Promise. Yes, yes, yes. Mary was full of praise because if you remember from last week, she received a visit from Gabriel the angel. And Gabriel came and delivered a message to her that she was blessed and highly favored and that she was getting ready to be overflowed by the Holy Spirit and overcome by the Holy Spirit and overshadowed by the Holy Spirit and she would be impregnated with the Messiah, the, the one that the angel told her to call him Jesus, the anointed one, the savior of the world. And she, and she, oh, hallelujah. She, like, what, what is this? Why are you telling me this? This can't be. And the angel had to let her know, nothing, 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 nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. God can do this thing. And so, with that being said, he says, now I want you to understand something. God is confirming and affirming that which I'm telling you. Because your cousin, Elizabeth, who was barren for all of these years in her old age, she is now six months pregnant. And so, that's where we pick up our text now. After the angel had given Mary this message, Mary said to the angel, be it unto me as you have said. And we talked about it on last week. We have to have that attitude when God does the impossible in our lives. When God shows us something that is about to happen, when he gives us a prompt, and we don't know how this promise is going to come to pass. We need to have trust. We need to have assurance in him. We need to have belief in him that whatever he said, whatever he said, be it unto us. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. God has told you some things. God has shown you some things. God has shared with you some things. And, and he is telling you that nothing is impossible for God. Whatever he wants to do with you, all you have to say is, be it unto me, Lord, as you have said. Oh, hallelujah. And so that's, that's the background of this lesson. Mary now is getting ready in a haste. She packed up her stuff and she headed straight to Elizabeth's house. And that's our first point for this morning. Mary is now visiting Elizabeth. Mary going on a visit to Elizabeth. And so the text says, when she got to Elizabeth's house, the, this is what the text says, verse 39. It says, Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled <clears throat> to a town in Judah in the hill country. Mary rose on those days and went into the hill with haste to a city in Judah. And when she got there, she entered into the house of, of Zechariah and, and greeted Elizabeth. Zechariah is, is Elizabeth's husband. Zechariah is, is the one of the priests at this time. And, and later, he actually became the high priest. But he was the, just an a, a, a anointed priest. And, it, and, and he was married to Elizabeth. And the scripture says in verse 41, as Mary visited him, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby 
and her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how it happened. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled uh, with the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I got to stop right here. Because if you remember on last week, I, I was talking about it from this standpoint. Mary's story is our story. Mary's story is our story. We have to see ourselves in Mary's story. I don't know about you. When, when great things happen to me, I have to call people. I have to tell people how good God has been to me. I have to share with them what God has done with me and what God is doing in me and God is doing for me and through me and all of that stuff because I'm excited. I want to celebrate it. I'm full of praise. I'm full of joy for what the Lord is doing in my life. <clears throat> And so I found this thing out. I found this thing out. It's some folks you don't need to call. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm going there. Because some folks you call and you tell them the good news of what God has done for you. And they be like, uh-huh, well, whatever. But then them same people. If you call and tell them you in trouble or you didn't have a bad situation, oh, they want to listen to all of that. Oh, I I'm here to tell y'all, you got to watch your haters. You got to watch your haters. You need to recognize who they are and then elevate yourself above them. Let your haters be your elevator. Don't be calling them folks that don't want to celebrate with you. I'm here to tell you. Every time I see something happen in one of my friends' life, in one of my associates' life, and people that I'm around like, I get excited. Why do I get excited? Because I said, because nothing is impossible for God. If he did it for them, oh, I must be next in line. Glory, hallelujah, I must be next in line. And God is getting ready to do for me just like he did for them. I'm not envious. I'm not jealous. I get excited because God has just blessed somebody else and he must be getting ready to bless me. Oh, hallelujah. So, so I'm here to tell you, you need to find folks that celebrate you. Oh, I'm going to say that again. You need to find folks that celebrate you. Don't be just hanging around folks that tolerate you. Oh, I'm going to say that one more time. You need to find folks that celebrate you and not folks that just walking around tolerating you. Oh, it just burns my britches. Being around folks. You know, you know how they be looking. Mm -mm. Yeah, they give you that mm look. And start talking about, mm, uh-huh. They just waiting for you to fall and make a mistake. But that ain't the case here with Mary. Mary went and visited Elizabeth. The Holy Spirit had told her, I mean, the, the angel had told her that, that Elizabeth was pregnant. I don't know how they communicated back then. I don't know if the communication ever got there that, that Mary was pregnant or, or that Elizabeth was pregnant. All I know is the scripture say. Because, you know, they didn't have telephones and, and email and, and Facebook and all that. All I know is Elizabeth Harry, I mean Mary Harry to visit Elizabeth. And when she got that, that baby, the baby jumped. The baby leaped in the womb of Elizabeth. Now, you need to understand who the baby is. The baby is John the Baptist. Elizabeth and Zachariah are the mother and father of John the Baptist, the forerunner. And this was Jesus' cousin that would later be the one crying in the wilderness, telling everybody, you must repent. 
Because the kingdom of God is at hand. He was the preparer. He was the one that was telling them about the way. And now, even in the womb, this baby leaps for joy because the baby realized that he, even in the womb, was in the presence of the anointed one, the Messiah, the Lord and Savior. And I want you to see something here. My One of my friends came over yesterday. and I had to tell him about how uh, uh, I fell in love with my wife, Sandra, and how we met and all of that. And I told him, I said, man, when I first saw my wife, Sandra, in 1979, on, on, on uh, August 12th, at 8 p.m., oh, come on, y'all, y'all got to hear me, a.m. in the morning, 8 a.m. in the morning, when I first saw, my spirit leaped and I said, that's bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Oh, my wife couldn't stand my guts for two and a half, three years. It, but I, I didn't give up because God had gave me a promise that when I went to Grambling State University, I was going to find my wife. That was his promise to me. And my spirit leaped when I saw my wife, Sandra. But check this out. 33 years later. Oh, I can go say 35. Well, it's, it's now 90, it's, it's 40, almost 40 years later. 38, what is it? 40, 36 years later. Let me say it that way. We've been married now for 32 years. Glory, hallelujah. You got to give God some praise. You got to be full of praise. When he, you, when he tells you what he going to do for you, you got to give him praise and have an attitude of praise when he tells you what he promised you. Oh, hallelujah. Even before it comes to pass. And then you got to pursue your promise. Don't let nothing and nobody turn you around. Oh, hallelujah. I'm, I know I just went somewhere on somebody because see many people hear the promises of God and they say, oh, well, that, that's just a bunch of hoping and a wishing and, and a praying and all of that. No, when God promises you something, it's for sure. And your job is to trust and believe in him and pursue that promise with persistence. Don't give up. Don't let nobody turn you around. Oh, yeah, you're going to get attacked. Yes, weapons will be formed against you, but no weapon formed against you will prosper. Oh, hallelujah. Because the promises of God are sure and very sure. Oh, let me go on. The text says, so when, when, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped and she was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to sing. She began to sing. She began to give God praise. She said, you're so blessed among women and the baby in your womb is also blessed. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Oh, she starts celebrating. Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you and the fruit in your womb. And then she asked the question after she gave up all of this praise. Why am I so blessed? That the mother of my Lord would visit me. Why is this granted to me? That the mother of my Lord should come to me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ought to, we ought to be like Elizabeth. When certain people come into your presence, you got to ask the question, God, why you let me be that blessed? 
I, I thank God I was telling telling my cousin and I was telling my sister Helen. I just I just thank God for y'all because they they've been blessing us this week on the Friday Night Lights program that come on at at, at, at eight p.m. Central Time every Friday. And Pastor Helen has been preaching, and and Pastor Paul is is the co-host along with me, and he's been preaching and singing and just share. And I just said I thank God for you because every time I think of you. I must praise God for you. And that's how we should be with people. Every time we think about them, we should give them praise. When I think about my mama, I give God praise. My mama, 84 years old. When I think about my daddy at 85 years old, 86 this year, I get happy because I have a mother and a father still living. When I think about my siblings, when I... Think about my wife and my kids and my grandkids. Oh, and I even got a great grandchild. I ain't put my hands on them yet, but I get excited. I get excited that God would even bless me with these blessed people in my life. I'm like Elizabeth. Oh, and why am I so blessed? That the mother of my Lord visits me. Oh, Elizabeth got excited. Then, Mary. Ooh. The scripture says, the moment the sound of your greeting entered my ear. This is still Elizabeth. The baby in my womb skipped a, like a lamb for sheer joy. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting surround sounded in my ear, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Do you ever leap for joy when you're in the presence of the Lord? Knowing that he's there, knowing that he's around, knowing that he's in your life. Does that make you leap for joy? Don't you understand? Jesus told us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And we should always be leaping for joy no matter what we're going through. Whether we're going through hell or high waters, it does not matter. Jesus is there. Oh, you want me to bring out a testimony? Oh, I hear somebody talking to me. I hear three men. I think their name is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What y'all saying to me, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Well, we were in the fiery furnace. While we were up in the fiery furnace, Nebuchadnezzar had Put the fire seven times higher than it had ever been. But while we were in that furnace, Nebuchadnezzar looked in. He couldn't understand why we hadn't burned up. And he saw. He said, I put three, but there's a fourth man in there. And he looks like the son of God. Oh, you got to hear me today. No matter what you're going through, you ought to be leaping for joy that Jesus, the Christ, is there with you. And that's what that baby, John the Baptist, did. Woo! Blessed woman, she says, who believe what God says. Bless every word would come true. Bless is she who believes for there will be a fulfillment of these things which were told her from the Lord. That was Elizabeth's praise. That was Elizabeth's praise for what God had done for Mary. You got, you got to get with folks that's going to celebrate you. You got to get with folks to celebrate what God has done in your life and stop hanging out with folks that just tolerate you. Get with some folks that's going to celebrate you. And then you yourself, when you hear somebody else being blessed, you start celebrating. Don't be no hater. Don't be envious. Celebrate with them. So now, 
That's the vision of Mary to Elizabeth. Now, now we're going to get into Mary's praise. I told you about Elizabeth's praise, but now we're getting ready to get into Mary's praise. And according to my clock, if I'm trying to do 30 minutes, I got five more minutes. So this is going to be a preacher five minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at, look at, look at verse 46. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. And his, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arms. He has scattered the proud in their imaginations of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and, and the rich, he has sent them away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. He has spoken to our father, to Abraham and his seed forever. Mary and Mary, he says, remain there three months and return to her house. And now Elizabeth was full term and came for her to be delivered. And she brought forth a son. Mary, Mary, Mary. You ain't weeping now. This is the beginning. Oh, we know you're going to weep later. But right now, Mary is giving God all of the praise. All of the praise. All of the glory. All of the honor. Mary burst into praise because of the good news. She danced the song for, of our Savior. I don't know about you. When God gives us good news, we ought to burst into praise and have a dance. We should be dancing like Mary dancing. We should be dancing. So we dance so hard that we dance like 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 David dance and dance all out of our clothes. Uh, when God, oh hallelujah, when God has given us a promise and he's affirmed that promise and confirmed that promise, we ought to shout with praise even before the promise is fully manifested. Can you praise him in advance? Can you praise him because he just told you what's going to happen? Can you praise him when you start asking him for something and you say, God, I just praise you because I know it's already done. Because your word tell me whatever I have stand in the need of, you will give it to me. Whatever I ask in your name, you will provide for me. Your word tells me that you will supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. So when God, when you tell me something, whether you tell me through your word, whether you tell me through a message preached by a preacher, a pastor, or a teacher, whether you tell me something, from a prophet, I'm going to give you praise because glory to God is going to come to pass for sure. So I might as well praise you in advance. Oh, we talk about this this way. 
when you go to your ATM machine, when you walk up to your ATM machine and stick your card in your ATM machine, there is no doubt in your mind that you got money in the bank. You wouldn't be foolish enough to come to the ATM machine if you didn't know you had money in the bank. And you put your card in, you put your security code in. Oh, y'all got to hear me. You put your card in and you put the security code in. And next thing you know, you put the amount you want out and your money come out. You better put your card into God and ask him what you want. And then you enter your security code. J-E-S. U.S. That says if Jesus is willing to give it to you, you'll have it. And then open your hands because it's getting ready to come out. Just like your money comes out of the ATM machine. And Mary was giving God praise because that which he had promised that she was going to be the mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has now been confirmed by her cousin Elizabeth's pregnancy and her cousin Elizabeth's praise. We ought to have that kind of praise on our lips. We ought to have that kind of praise in our life that we recognize what God has done what God is doing and what God is going to do in our lives. Woo, I could go on and on with this lesson, but I'm going to conclude it because I'm trying to speak, stick to my time frame. If you want to hear more about this lesson, you can log on and call in on your telephone when we go into the overtime period at 910-218-0531. At but I'm getting ready to conclude this message. This message teaches us that, the, that God's promises are sure. There's no doubt that his promises will happen. Because we can be sure of God's promise. We should always obey and always trust what God has said. Let's be full of praise. Because his promises are sure. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we praise you and rejoice in all that you have done for us. Help us to always trust in you and your word and to believe in your promise. In Jesus' name, amen. Final thought, God. Always, and I'm saying always, God always uses people we might not expect in ways we can't even imagine. Let's go now again to the Lord in prayer for the prayer of salvation. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we come confessing with our mouth and believing in our heart that Jesus died for our sins and that you raised him from the dead. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins. Please, Lord Jesus, come into our heart and be our Lord and Savior. Then send your Holy Spirit to help us to do your will for the rest of our lives. Sign, seal, and deliver us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. For those of you on Facebook, this is the end of the lesson. I hope this word bless you today. Now, if you want to come on overtime with us and do some discussion, the number is 910-218-0531. Be blessed on Facebook. Bye-bye.